snow. Um, so I just have a couple verses that I'm basing like all the rest of the scripture off of. And it's Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Um, I guess I didn't write the rest of that down, but um, I'm going to pray first anyway. So, oh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for all that you are and all that you do. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just adore you. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be able to speak your word and to be able to speak your truth in all love and to speak your love in all truth lord heavenly father i just bless your name and i thank you and i love you and i adore you and i give you all honor glory praise and thanksgiving for all that you are all that you do all that you always have done and always will do it's in the name of yeshua our beautiful messiah that i give all this to you, Lord. Hallelujah and amen. <clears throat> all right. Hi, guys. So, um, I am going to read the whole scripture, even though I have it split up in my notes. So, I'm going to go to that. It's Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. I have this, you know, I, I see it and I understand a lot of the confusion about Jesus and about, you know, um, his commandments. And that, you know, a lot of voices out there will tell you you have to get yourself right and cleaned up and, and, and you know, clean yourself. Um and so that's one of the main reasons that I felt like I should do a little bit deeper dive on Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. And so I'll read it. It's come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the reason is, is when you're yoked with Jesus, and I even have the scripture, you know, um, that they, the Father God and Jesus come and make your, his, their home in you. <laughs> and so when you're, you know, at home with Jesus, when you're yoked with him, it is easy. It is very light. And um, it's because he's carrying it all for you. There's like, there's not... That's why he wants you to come weary and burdened. That's why he wants you to come with all the stuff that you carry, both, you know, um, just in life, how that goes, right? And then also the sins of our, uh, you know, that we commit and then the sins of others because, you know, it goes both ways, you know, like a lot of us have experienced a lot of the consequences of sins of others and we like to point the fingers, you know, but we also still have sin and I'm not, you know, saying that that, you know, excuses anybody else's sin against you, but Jesus wants us to forgive and just let that go because he wants to forgive and have us let us or let have us let it all go and just give it to him. And, and he, his justice, which is way better than ours will prevail. And so that's why, um, I wanted to give, or like I said, go deeper on this scripture. And I believe Father God is going to speak through um, all the scripture that he says, or that I have, because he says it does not return void. And so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus says that all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me will not be cast out. That is in... John 6, John chapter 6, and verse 37. And actually, I'm just going to start at verse 35 because it says, I am the bread of life, Jesus told him, told them. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. But as I told you, you see me and yet you do not believe. 
Everyone the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up in the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Love it. Hallelujah and amen. Uh, and then, you know, he's, a lot of people stop people from coming. And, and Jesus just says, come also in Revelation. Um, this is both the spirit and the bride say come and the, the church. That's, that's us. We, you know, the people that follow Jesus are supposed to be inviting you to this party because it is really, I mean, to have joy and perfect joy and perfect shalom in a place that's not easy to have it is a, is a gift. And so this is Revelation twenty two seventeen. It says, both the spirit and the bride say, come. Anyone who hears should say, come. And the one who is thirsty should come. Whoever desires should take the living water as a gift. It's a gift. You just take it. Love it. Um, and the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's in Romans 6. It's free. It's free. You can't earn it. And so that's why I keep standing on this platform of that it's free and that it's a gift. Because I know what it's like to have to feel like I have to earn it my whole life for, you know, to please people, to please God, to please just life so it would stop picking on me. <laughs> just being honest, y'all. <laughs> um, let's see, it says, <clears throat> Romans six twenty three for the wages of sin is de death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I love that. Um, <clears throat> we also get authority with that, um, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven, and oh, that's verse 18, but still that's fine, um, he said to them, Watch Satan fall from heaven like a lightning flash. Look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will ever harm you. However, don't rejoice in that. Sub don't rejoice in that. The spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's the real joy is, is that your names are there, but then you're also seated up there in heaven with him. Um, he says in John chapter 14 that he won't leave us as orphans. Um, and so he's going to be there with you. He's not going to just like, just leave you hanging, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know what else is, how else to phrase that, I suppose. But um says, I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. And he promises a counselor. He says, if you love me, you would keep my commands. And his commands, remember, just love God with everything you got and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's, that's all it says. Um, it's the greatest commands. And he says, that fulfills the law. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. So you come and, you know, you <laughs> just ask him. And, and it even says, and I can't remember the other scripture where he says, you know, the father is not going to deny you when you ask him for his Holy Spirit. He, he can't, he won't deny it. You know, like if you ask him for his Holy Spirit, he will give it to you. He's the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. And, um, the good news here is that Jesus says that he, um, well, it's all good news, but uh, he also says that he didn't come to call 
the righteous. He came to call sinners. And the good news is even further is that we all are. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. Um, Luke 5.32 is where it says that. It says, then I'm just going to go ahead and start actually at verse 29. So Luke 5, verse 29. Then Levi hosted, and he was a tax collector, that Jesus just said, hey, come follow me. And he did. <laughs> I love it. And then they had dinner with a whole bunch of <clears throat> other sinners, <laughs> just like this tax collector that decided to have um, to follow Jesus. Then Levi, which was very looked down upon, by the way, at that time, especially by the Jewish people. Then Levi hosted, and maybe today, then Levi hosted a grand banquet for him at his house. Now there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others who were guests with them. But the Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus replied to them, The healthy don't need a doctor, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Love it. Love it. That's all of us. And then, you know, um, the Old Testament in Proverbs 2, 6, it says that, you know, he gives us wisdom and understanding. Um, and actually, you know, in the beginning, I think it's at the beginning of Proverbs, I believe, um, which I know Proverbs 2 is, but it talks about how it's just like out there. <laughs> or maybe it's in the middle, but it just, wisdom is just out there talking. I'm just waiting for people to listen to her. She's she's a she <laughs> in the Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 2, 6. Um, I guess I can just start at the beginning, actually. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within within you, listening closely to wisdom and directing your heart to understanding. Furthermore, if you call out to insight and lift your voice to understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. It's not wrong. And discover the knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up success for the upright, and he is a shield for those who live with integrity, so that he may guard the paths of justice and protect the way of his loyal followers. It says, then you will understand righteousness, justice, and integrity. Every good path. Every good path, it says. For wisdom will enter your mind, and knowledge will delight your heart. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Discretion will watch over you, and understanding will guard at you, rescuing you, rescuing you from the way of evil, from the one who says perverse things. It does. It does. Um, he does. <laughs> um, he also gives it to us to protect us from deceit and from sin. Um, we're going to go back to um, the New Testament, uh, Matthew 7. It says, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces good fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. It says, so you'll recognize them by their fruit. And, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and if you want to know what the fruits of the Spirit are, I've, I've talked about um, faith being a um, get fruit of the Spirit. And so let me go ahead and just go to that in some Galatians. <laughs> to, uh, it says... Um, Freedom from the law. <laughs> it's such good news, you guys. Um, I'm 
Well, I guess I don't. <laughs> I was like, I was gonna say, I guess I don't know which chapter it is, but I found it. <laughs> it's Galatians five. It says, <clears throat> "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, shalom, which is peace, but on a deeper level, wholeness, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control." It says again, such things there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So since we live by the Spirit, we must also follow the Spirit. We must not become conceited in provoking one another and envying another, one another. And it goes into Galatians 6 um, about carrying each other's burdens. You know, um, if someone's caught, you know, in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual are to restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourself so you won't be tempted. You also won't be tempted. It says, carry one another's burden in this way. You will fulfill the law of Christ. So you look out for yourself. That's what it means to, you know, um, carry your own because it's going to go into the end. It says for each person will have to carry his own load. And so, um, you know, like that means, you know, staying in Jesus is staying in the word. It's really that simple. Like I didn't do anything special really to love the word this much. I just didn't. I um, would read the promises and I read that it was a yes and amen. And I read that, you know, Jesus said, and so, and he's the truth. And, and if he said it, I just got to the point where I was just like, well, you know what, if he says it, I'm going to believe it. And, you know, um, <clears throat> as time went on, I started doing less and less things that involved anything other than the word of God. And, um, I don't know how that works. I just know that once he's in you, like he just, it's, it's done. Like he, he'll just carry you. Like it's, it's, I don't know. I go into further scripture. Um, John and John seven, this is, you know, Jesus, he stands up and he shouts in a loud voice because he wants everybody. It's not, this isn't a special club, you know, that you can't join. Um, and you don't have to dress up or be anything. You just come. It says on the last, and this is John seven thirty seven. on the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and cried out. If anyone is thirsty, he should come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scripture has said, will have streams of living water flow from deep within him. He said this about the spirit. Those who believed in Jesus were going to receive the spirit for the spirit had not yet been received because Jesus had not yet been glorified, but he already has been. Um, and in the, you know, when it says anyone who's thirst should come to me, He's talking about, do you thirst for righteousness? Do you, do you thirst for things to be not like this? Not crazy, not wars, not people hurting each other in the ways that, you know, people are hurting each other. That is what he's talking about. If you are hungry and you are thirsty for righteousness, for things to be better and for justice to actually happen, that is what he's talking about. He's not saying, you know, he, again, he says he's not, you know, he, he didn't come for the righteous. He came to make us righteous. So righteousness could be, you know, brought to earth for all of us. Um, in James four, it says, come near to God and he'll come near to you. It says, wash your hands, you sinners with the free water, perhaps is what I wrote in my notes. You know, the living water and purify your hearts, you double minded. And, um, you know, a lot of times that's through fire. And that means, you know, like really difficult stuff and, you know, heart surgery. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, he says, submit to God and the devil will flee for you from you. And this is James 4 7 and 8. Um, and he says, to be miserable and mourn and weep. 
And so that may be that water too, because it's salty and purifies is another thing I wrote in my notes. Um, humble yourself, admit your failings. Um, it's okay because he knows them already. He literally does. It says it in Psalm. <laughs> well, it says it a lot, but I, you know, <laughs> we're just going to go with Psalm 69.5. says, God, you know my foolishness and my guilty acts are not hidden from you. He says, do not let those who put your, their hope in you be disgraced because of me, it even says. Um, that's David. Uh, you know, the future, well, the past and future king of Israel. I don't know how it works. <laughs> um, but there's also joy and forgiveness too and Psalm 32. So like after I have scripture on that as well. In Psalm 32, the joy of forgiveness, it says, how joyful is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How joyful is the man the Lord does not charge with sin and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones became brittle from my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was drained as in the summer's heat. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. And did not conceal my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you took away the guilt of my sin. And therefore, let everyone who is faithful pray to you. And that just means, you know, a fruit of the spirit to be, you know, faith. And he said, a tiny mustard seed of faith. So even if you're like, huh, I, you know, I believe in God and ask, <laughs> pray, says, at a time that you may be found, when great floodwaters come, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with joyful sounds of deliverance. God surrounds you with joyful sounds, shouts of deliverance. And that's in the New Testament too. It says, heaven rejoices over one sinner that turned from their sins. Heaven rejoices when you turn. Just one, it says. Just one heaven rejoices. It explodes and praises. Hallelujah. Um, says, I will instruct you and show you the way to go with my eye on you. I will give you counsel. Do not be like a horse or mule without understanding that must be controlled with bit and bridle or else it will not come near you. Many pains come to the wicked. But the one who trusts in the Lord will have faithful love surrounding him. Now, it doesn't say, it doesn't say your life is going to be perfect. You're going to be perfectly healed immediately. And you're going to be rich. And you're going to be able to, you know, save the world. <laughs> like Jesus already did that, by the way. But, you know, you will have faithful love surrounding you. That is true. It's true. I, I am a witness. I am a witness. It is true to... The confession and the healing even before the healing if that makes sense like physically and you know like my circumstances and the, those things haven't changed but my insides are completely I mean I'm refreshed I'm new, I'm renewed you know I know joy and when I don't I'm like oh okay so what's up guys what am I supposed to be learning through this and 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 we get through it much quicker <laughs> hallelujah glory be to God that's not me but, Holy Spirit, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Um, and, you know, I just wrote in my notes, you know, um, just a personal, just for me to you, me, familia, and that's everyone in the world. No one's excluded from this. Um, it's freedom to let go, y'all. It really is. It hurts. Yes, to admit to God you're a sinner and to be specific. But he knows anyways, all of them. It's ugly to look in the biblical mirror. But once he has you, y'all, it's so good. Yes, yeah, still, still ugly to look in that mirror and to look at our gross, sinful ways. But what he does with it is awesome and beautiful. Um, you know, in Ephesians 4, it even says to put on the new self. Um, but I also want to go into... Um, a little bit of First John before I go into Ephesians. Oops. 
First John, First John one and two. Um, let's start in First John one, our first, yeah, First John. Oh yeah, one. In verse 9. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to start. Um, going out at the beginning. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have observed and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. That life was revealed and we have seen it and we testify and declare to you. The eternal life was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you, so that you may have fellowship along with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. And other messages read, your joy may be complete. And I like that one better, because that's, that's what I want. I want the whole world to know this joy and the shalom. Now, this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. And there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness, we are lying and are not practicing the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. <clears throat> it says if we, have, say, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to read that again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we do not have any sin, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And you know, something that, that would, and this isn't the only verse that does this. This is just the only one that I have in front of me that I can say has given me one of those things that I was just talking about earlier, how like I would read something and be like, well, yes, <laughs> that sounds, that sounds really awesome. I believe that that is true. And because Jesus says it's true, it is right. And so this is one of the things that makes me believe and hope and know that God is going to give us acts and home churches that are that of like the Bible greater maybe because he even says that we'll do greater things and that's another one see there you go there's another one where I was like well father god <laughs> why am I not doing greater things it feels like you know like um you say it it's true I believe it I want it and I want the world to have it <laughs> um and so uh, it says though, it says, if, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us all, us from all sin. And so, you know, I would think about it and I would look at all the churches, both the one that I grew up in, you know, the ones that I grew up in. And then, you know, all the churches that I've seen and gone to and experienced throughout my whole life. And. I kept thinking, well, <laughs> we have fellowship with one another. Why don't we? Why don't we? I just, I just, I'm asking that question. Um, Ephesians 4, 22. Oops, I passed it. Um, 22 rather through 24. Right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start at verse 17. Therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord. You should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. They became callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity for the practice of every kind of impurity with the desire for more and more. But that is not how you learned about the Messiah, assuming you heard about him or were taught by him, because the truth is in Jesus. 
You took off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires. You are being renewed in the spirit of your minds. You put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of truth. So since you will put away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. It says, be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't give the devil an opportunity. So there's, so there's, you know, scriptural keys, if you will. If you got some anger, don't let the sun go down on it because that gives the devil an opportunity. I don't know exactly all that that means. I just know that, you know, if we confess our anger, which can be a sin because it says, Jesus says in scripture that if we're angry with our brother, that um, we're guilty of murder. And so I just, I, I, I can just only assume that if we confess that, that sin of anger, like if we're, you know, it's coming towards nighttime and it's time for bed or, you know, confess it. It's okay. He knows. It's okay. He got angry too, by the way. And granted, his was righteous anger, but, um, so, um, says the thief must no longer steal. Instead, he must do honest work with his own hands so that he has something to share with anyone in need. The work of God is to believe in Jesus Christ. Um, no foul language is to come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace to those who hear. He says, don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You are sealed by him for the day of redemption. He says, all bitterness, anger, and wrath, shouting and slander must be removed from you along with all malice and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. And, and remember, all we have to do is just say it. God, I got impatient and angry today, you know, with, let me fill in the blank, with myself, with whoever. And um, I love, in the Old Testament, it talks about, well, I mean, it's all in the Bible, all of this, but um, I love it when it's so just there. <laughs> Second Chronicles, and you can't deny that our God is the same. The Old Testament God and the New Testament God. First, second, chronicle, second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. It's a revival under Asa. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and start at the beginning. The Spirit of God came on Azariah, son of Oded. So he went out to meet Asa. And said to him, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin, hear me. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For many years, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest and without instruction. But when they turned to the Lord, God of Israel in their distress and sought him, he was found by them. In those times when there was no peace for those who went about their daily activities because the residents of the lands had many conflicts, Nation was crushed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every possible distress. But as for you, be strong and be discouraged, for your work has a reward. And so, you know, he's talking about the work of the Lord. It has a reward. Um, even though, you know, we don't see it yet. Um, John 14 new covenant promise to kind of go along with that so john 14 verse 26 so i'm just going to go to verse 19, 1 John 14, it says, In a little while the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. In that day you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me, and I am in you. The one who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me, and the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I will also love him and reveal my, will reveal myself to him. Judas said to him, Lord, how is it you're going to reveal yourself to us and not the world? 
Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. The one who doesn't love me will not keep my words. The word that you hear is not mine, but is from the father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, the father will send him in my name and will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I told you. And he even says, goes on to say, you know, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. It says your heart must not be troubled or fearful. Isn't that great? We have a God that says, fear me, but don't fear all that mess out there. <laughs> um, in verse 20, yeah, I did. I Verse 27. Um, let's see. Paul's sermon in Acts is another one that really describes it well. Acts 13. Um, <clears throat> that's actually, it's funny. It's called preparing for the mission field. I didn't notice that before so, or think, remember that, I guess. In the church that was at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barna Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, the Cy Cyrenian, Menaean, a close friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work I have called them to do. Then after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. Being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they came down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Arriving in Salamis, they proclaimed God's message in the Jewish synagogues. They also had John as their assistant. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came across a sorcerer, a Jewish false pro prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul, pro -consul rather, Serg Sergius, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear God's message. But Elimus the sorcerer, this is the meaning of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from their faith. Then Saul, also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared straight at the sorcerer and said, You are the son of the devil, full of all deceit and all fraud, enemy of all righteousness. Won't you ever stop perverting the straight paths of the Lord? Now look, the Lord's hand is against you. You are going to be blind and will not see the sun for a time. Suddenly a mist and darkness fell on him and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul, seeing what happened, believed and was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Pergo in Pamphylia. John, however, left them and went back to Jerusalem. They continued their journey from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the day of Shabbat, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any message of encouragement for the people, you can speak. Then Paul stood up and motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people of Israel chose our ancestors, exalted the people during their stay in Egypt, in the land of Egypt, and led them out of it with a mighty arm. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. Then after destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to them as an inheritance. This all took about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. After removing him, he raised up David as their king and testified about him. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man to be loyal, man loyal to me, who will carry out all my will. From this man's descendants, according to the promise, God brought the Savior, Jesus, Lord Yeshua, to Israel. Before he came to public attention, John had previously proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And then John was completing his life's, then as John was completing his life's work, he said, who do you think I am? I am not the one, but look, someone is coming after me and I'm not worthy to untie the sandals of his feet. Brothers, sons of Abraham's race and those among you who fear God, the message of the salvation has been sent to us. 
for the residents of Jerusalem and the rulers, since they did not recognize him, and the voices of the prophets that are read every Shabbat have fulfilled their words by condemning him. Though they found no grounds for the death penalty, they asked Pilate to have him killed. When they had fulfilled all that had been written about him, they took him down from the tree and put him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and he appeared for many days to those who came with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. Hallelujah and amen. And we ourselves proclaim to you the good news of the promises that was made to our ancestors. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Since he raised from the dead, never to, to return to decay, he has spoken in this way. I will grant you the faithful covenant blessings made to David. Therefore, he also says in another passage, you will not allow your Holy One to see decay. For David, after serving his own generation and God's plan fell asleep, was buried with his fathers and decayed. But the one, but the one God raised up did not decay. decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers, that through this man, forgiveness of sins is pro being proclaimed to you. And faith comes from hearing. So just by listening, you can receive faith from God. Um, and everyone who believes in him is justified from everything that you could not be justified through the law of Moses. So beware that what it is said in the prophets does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, marvel and vanish away because I'm doing a work in your days, a work that you will never believe even if someone to explain it to you. Love, it just... Um, it says, as they were leaving, the people begged that these matters be presented to them in the, the following Shabbat. After the synagogue had been dismissed, many of the Jews and devout, devout um, proselytes followed Paul with Barnabas, who were speaking with them and persuading them to continue in the grace of God. The following Shabbat, almost the whole town assembled to hear the message of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to oppose what Paul was saying by insulting him. Then Paul and Barnabas boldly said it was necessary for God's message to be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and consider yourselves unworthy of eternal life, this part. It says, you now turn, we now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. That's everybody. It says, when the Gentiles heard this, they rejoiced and glorified the message of the Lord, and all who had been appointed to eternal life believed. So the message of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jews incited the prominent women who worshipped God and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their district. But they shook the dust off their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. Oh, I love that. Isaiah 55 is another scripture that shows that his word, you know, doesn't return void and that he, you know, he's a, he fulfills his promises. You know, my whole point of all this is, you know, um, God, all, he says he watches over his word even to accomplish it. Um, I guess I didn't write down the scripture. That's unfortunate for that one. But you can Google that. He watches over his word to accomplish it. But I have Isaiah, um, 55 where you know it says his word that he sends out to him and actually i'm going to start at the beginning because it's another one of those just come if you're thirsty you know it says come everyone who is thirsty i come to the waters and you without money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without cost why do you spend money on what is not food and your wages on what does not satisfy Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and you will enjoy you will enjoy the choicest of foods. Pay attention and come to me. Listen so that you will live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the promises assured to David. Since I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples, so you will summon a nation that you do not know, and nations who you do not know will run to you. For the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, has glorified you says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the wicked one abandon his way and the sinful one his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord so he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will freely forgive. 
for my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts you, uh, than your thoughts. For just as the rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth and making it germinate and sprout to providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. It says, you will indeed go out with joy and be peacefully guided. The mountains and the hills will break into singing before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of a thorn bush, a cypress will come up and instead of a briar or a myrtle will come up. It will make a name for Yahweh as an everlasting sign that will not be destroyed. Remember what it said at the beginning of that. It says, you know, let the wicked one and sinful one return to the Lord. Just a simple turnaround. I think I'm going to end it there for now. Because I still have quite a bit left. Well, not quite a bit left. But I think just, you know, one more video will do. And I will do it today and release it today. Um, Lord willing, obviously. Um... But I just wanted to end with his words because I think that's beautiful, you know. Um, it will make a name for Yahweh as an everlasting sign that will not be destroyed. Um, the trees will clap their hands as you go outside. I just love that line. And so I'm going to end this with numbers. Um, <clears throat> Chapter 6, verses 24 through 22. May Yahweh bless you and protect you. May Yahweh make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh look with favor on you and give you shalom. Hallelujah and amen. And actually, you know, I never really have read this one. It says, in this way, they will pronounce my name over the Israelites and I will bless them. So that's the last little part of that. Um, Jesus loves you. Yahweh, Holy One of Israel, loves you. That's why he sent his son to save the world and to atone for every sin that you've ever committed and every sin that you ever will commit. Hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah and amen, you guys. This is good news. Bye and God bless you.